Hello and test select. This is the fourth clip on your last chapter that is Indian politics, trends and development. In this clip, I'll be explaining about uh, the development in Indian politics in the context of 1990s. All right. Uh, although it is not mentioned in the syllabus, however, as per the latest CBSE instruction regarding what pages the students have to read from the old textbooks, this topic is included in the page that we need to read. Okay, I'll be sharing the link in the description below so that you can access the document. In that document, you'll find all the details of the page numbers you need to read from your textbooks and the page numbers that you need not to read. All right, so without any further ado, let's move right into uh, onto the topic. So in this clip, I'll be covering the developments in the Indian politics in the context of 1990s. All right. Now, by the end of 1980s, India witnessed five developments that made long lasting impact on Indian politics. And the five developments uh, were the end of Congress system, uh, the rise of Mandal issue, new economic reform, the assassination of uh, Rajiv Gandhi, a Yodhya issue, or the Babri Masjid issue. We'll do one by one. So the first is the most crucial development of this period, and that was the end of the Congress system. Let's look at the election chart again. I'm using the same chart. Now we know and can see that until 1977, Congress had been enjoying absolute majority. However, in uh, 1977, following the emergency by uh, Indira Gandhi, Congress loses the election and Janata Party, which was the coalition, uh, forms the government. Okay, But then Congress wins again in 1980 and 1984. Let's have a closer view at the 1984 election. Here. Now, Indira Gandhi gets assassinated or she gets killed in 1984 by her own bodyguards uh, af after or in the aftermath of the Operation Blue Star. Now, I won't go in detail about what the Operation Blue Star was or why was it launched. Otherwise, the video will become very long. Okay, so uh, you can read on the same topic uh, in page number 159 159 in your book one besides you will also find uh, you know tons of information on that in the internet as well okay so anyway during the 1984 elections congress wins with a huge majority with 415 votes a sort of comeback uh, now, many say that it could be due to the public sympathy that was caused by the assassination of Indira Gandhi. Uh, so, Rajiv Gandhi, anyway, becomes the uh, prime minister. But then in the very next election, that is in 1989, Congress loses with only 197 votes. And you can see that, uh, you know, since... 1989 congress could never win absolute majority okay in fact we know that since 1989 all the governments have been coalition governments uh, because of which we term 1989 as the beginning of the coalition era we have already learned that before so i'm sure you remember those Second is the rise of uh, the Mandal issue. Now, this uh, deals with the reservation of seats for the other backward class. So, as I just said, Mandal issue is related to demand for reservation for OBC, that is the other backward classes. Now, what do you mean by other backward classes? Okay, so... Other backward classes or OBC are communities other than SC, that is scheduled caste, and ST or scheduled tribe who suffer from educational and social backwardness. Okay, and these are also referred to as backward 
caste. Now, OBC consisted of 52 percent, uh, you know, so uh, who were socially and educationally backward. Okay, so actually reservations for the OBC were in existence uh, in the southern states since the 1960s. However, during the Janata Party rule, okay, the reservation for OBC in northern states was strongly raised by the people. Uh, in fact, Bihar's chief minister, Karpur, Karpuri Thakur had actually introduced a new reservation for the OBCs in Bihar as well. So, following Bihar in 1978, the uh, Janata Party government, they appointed a commission called Mandal Commission under the name of the chairperson of the commission uh, who was Bindeshwari Prasad Mandal. Here, I've taken this uh, picture from your textbook. And this uh, commission was uh, is also known as the Second Backward Classes Commission because it was the second time since independence that the government had appointed such a commission. Okay, now the Mandal Commission was to investigate the extent of educational and social backwardness among various sections of Indian society and uh, not only recommend ways of identifying these backward classes but also recommend ways to end this backwardness as well okay so the commission finally gave its recommendation in 1980 in which uh, they have advised that the backward classes should mean backward caste okay since these classes are also treated as low like the schedule, uh, schedule caste or schedule tribe in the society okay and they have uh, also recommended 27 percent of seats in educational institutions and in uh, employments in government jobs and uh, besides that they've also recommended land reforms etc but then when the report was presented to the government the janata government by that time had already fallen and the recommendations could not be implemented. However, in 1990, the National Front government, uh, they decided to implement the Mandal Commission's recommendation on the reservations for OBC in uh, government jobs. And this resulted in agitations and protests in many cities of North India. Okay. Uh, students, they even self-immolated as a mark of protest against this reservation the decision was also uh, challenged in the supreme court and the case is also known as indra uh, swani case now indra swani she is one of the petitioners for this case okay and this uh, case got the name uh, after her uh, however the supreme court's decision was in favor of the government's decision Although some political parties were against the manner of implementation of this decision, however, uh, presently this policy of reservation for the OBCs has support of all the major political parties of the country. Okay, and uh, this Mandal issue also had political fallouts, or rather, it had uh, political consequences as well. Uh, the 1980s, they saw rise of political organization of Dalits. For example, under the leadership of Kanshi Ram, again, I've taken this picture from your textbook, the BAMCEF uh, in 1978 and the Bahujan Samaj Party was established on 14th April 1984. Now, the Bahujan Samaj Party or the BSP is a national level political party that was formed to represent Bahujans, uh, referring to the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and the other backward classes along with religious minorities. Uh, in the 1989 and 1991 elections, uh, this party achieved a breakthrough in UP with support from the Dalit voters. It was the first time 
in independent India that a political party supported mainly by Dalit voters had achieved this kind of political success. And these days, Mayawati leads the uh, party. So basically, we can say that the rise of political organizations or political parties of uh, the backward classes or caste in a way has been the result of uh, the Mandal issue. Okay. Then uh, third we have is the new economic reform. Now India adopted new economic reform policy in the form of uh, liberalization, privatization and globalization or commonly known as the LPG in 1991. Now, I've already covered this in detail under the topic India and globalization of uh, the chapter globalization. I'll leave the video link in the description below if you want to know more detail about it. Here, I'll just give you a brief explanation. Okay, so India faced financial crisis in 1990 because of which they even had to take loan from the World Bank. All right, so responding to the financial crisis and the desire for higher rates of economic growth, India changed its economic policy. It uh, liberalized its economy. Or in a way, it deregulated or uh, you can say in other words, it lifted restrictions on various sectors, including the trade and uh, foreign investments. India signed the free trade agreement with various countries uh, as well. And some of the reforms were that the public sector companies were open to uh, were made open to private restrictions on exports were reduced by reducing taxes business and industrialists from outside were invited etc uh, so these policies however were widely criticized by various movements and uh, organizations but the various governments that came to power afterwards have uh, continued to follow this economic reform policy okay then we have the uh, fourth point that is assassination of uh, rajiv gandhi the assassination of rajiv gandhi in may 1991 led to a change in the leadership of the congress party rajiv gandhi was assassinated during an election campaign tour in tamil nadu the picture which i have given uh, in the slide, he was assassinated by a Sri Lankan Tamil, this lady, who was linked to the LTTE or the Liberation of Tamil Tigers Ilam, which was a militant group in Sri Lanka. Now, again, I've already explained why he was assassinated by the LTTE group under the topic Sri Lanka. Okay, so anyway, in the elections of 1991, Congress emerged as the single largest party so uh, following rajiv gandhi's death the party chose narsimha rao as the prime minister finally we have the ayodhya or babri masjid dispute or issue of uh, the 1986 again the same topic has been covered in the second clip of this chapter so this should be a revision for you all now babri masjid at ayodhya was a 16th century mosque However, some Hindus, uh, they believed that it was built after demolishing a temple of Lord Ram, which is believed to be his birthplace or uh, the Ram Janambhumi. Okay, so the whole issue actually revolved around the control of uh, the site or of the place. Now, in 1949, some Hindu activists uh, placed idols of Ram in the mosque which eventually led to the locking up of the mosque or the mosque was uh, closed okay but then in February 1986 after almost uh, 40 years the Fazabath district court ordered the Babri Masjid to be unlocked okay so as soon as this was announced mobilization began on both sites many hindu and uh, muslim organizations they tried to mobilize 
their communities uh, on this question. For example, the BJP along with the RSS um, and the uh, RSS means the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh and the VHP, that is the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, it made many more mobilizing uh, programs. Okay, BJP made this uh, issue as an electoral plan and uh, in order to generate public support, they even took out a massive march called Rath Yatra from Gujarat uh, to Ayodhya on 25th September 1990. And uh, we know that this uh, Rath Yatra was led by the then BJP President L.K. Advani. Then on 6th December 1992, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad and the Bharati Janata Party, they organized a rally at uh, Ayodhya involving 150,000 volunteers uh, known as Karsevaks. Now, Karsevaks are those uh, devotees who have volunteered to provide their service for building the Ram Temple. Okay, And besides the Karsevaks, thousands of people have also gathered uh, at Ayodhya on 6th December uh, 1992, as I said uh, earlier, and they demolished the mosque. Okay, this of course led to Hindu Muslim clashes, and this event at Ayodhya also led to a series of other developments. For example, the uh, UP government with BJP as the ruling party was uh, were dismissed by the central government. The other states where the BJP was in power were also put under the president's rule. Uh, a case against the chief minister of UP for the contempt of court was also filed. And the government also appointed a commission to um, investigate on the whole uh, incident. Okay. Uh, finally, in November 2019, now based on the evidence uh, that the Archaeological Survey of India during its excavation of the site uh, had found remains of a temple, the Supreme Court ordered that the land be handed over to a trust to build the Hindu, uh, Hindu temple. Okay, And the groundbreaking ceremony was also performed on 5th August uh, 2020 by the Indian Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi. It also ordered the government to give an alternate five acre tract of land to, uh, to build the mosque. So this is all about the development of Indian politics in the context of 1990s. Uh, next video will be the last video in which I'll be covering the emergence of uh, BJP and the emergence of a new consensus. Until then, take care and bye-bye.